Hey, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta bring that shit back. It's good to have you with us. What's up everybody, I'm back with another video and for today's topic, I wanted to talk about a situation that's kind of old at this point. Well, it's going on a year, so this is pretty old, but some new information came about not too long ago, a new perspective, so I wanted to talk about it. So, Wolf Tyler is a 23-year-old social media personality turned musical artist and songwriter from New York. She got her start on Vine and it just all went from there. She writes music for herself and other artists. One of her most recent artists that she worked with is Megan Thee Stallion through Juicy J. She wrote the hook for Simon Says that appears on Megan's mixtape from last summer called Fever. Well, just a little backstory for those of you who don't know. When the album came out, Tyla posted on her Instagram saying that she was grateful for having a song that she helped write or that she took a part of, something along those lines, on the album. And of course, that's when all hell broke loose because of the messy, messy internet. And I know some of the videos I do on this channel could be classified as a little messy, but I'm talking about the real messy people of social media, like the kind that tries to make oranges into lemonade because they couldn't find any lemons, those people. Well, the messy sector of social media took what Tyla said as if she was taking credit for writing the entire song, including Megan's verses. And when the trolls made their way to Megan, of course, she was offended and felt that she had to defend her lyricism, especially since there was so much controversy about rappers writing their own lyrics after Cardi B admitted that she gets help on some of her tracks. So just to refresh your memory, or in case you didn't know, this is what Megan said. So, the point is, <laughs> the motherfucking point is, let me explain this to y'all. So, what a reference track is, not meaning that the bitch wrote no shit. You know what I'm saying? That means somebody wrote it and said, hey, go say this. Cause uh, when Juicy J brought the song to me, and y'all from know, y'all know I don't let nobody write sh for me. The one other time I let a nigga say, "Hey, this would be a good idea," and I take it. Here come a random motherfucker trying to act like they really did some. Sh now, if sis wanted some credit, what she should have said was, "Megan, I had something to do with the hook, wooty woo." And when you got the posting and sh you should have been like. Da -da -da -da, I was on the hook. You know what I'm saying? You was insinuating that you wrote the song and people was coming under my face saying, yeah, da -da -da -da, such and such wrote this. If you would have been clear and direct from the beginning, we wouldn't even be doing all this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't even been that crucial. And it's still not that crucial because I don't got no problem with admitting when somebody did something. They telling me you ain't did shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's really throwing me for a loop that you would really come at me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't play with me like you really did something. And you dropping references and shit. Ain't nobody gonna wanna f*** with you because you're doing some goofy shit. You know what I'm saying? If you a writer, why, and you writing hits and all this other shit, write you a song. Don't be coming over here trying to act like I need a to do something for me. I write everything I do. So, uh, that's just that on that. That's all I wanted to say. Y'all know I ain't never mad. I ain't never doing no tripping. I just thought that was really goofy. Like, just know that I'm cool. And you can really come talk to me. That internet is just really lame, you know? That's really whack. That's really whack. Y'all know I take all my pride in doing all my writing. So I really felt like it was whack that somebody would try to come and insinuate that they was writing for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because if you just would have been clear from the beginning... We wouldn't have had to get into no hot girl shit. That's just what it is. That's the basic. Anybody could have said Simon Says. That's the thing. Like, stop it. Stop it. How about this? How about I redo the song and we take that off? We'll be good with that? Simon Says. So this ended up making Will Tyler look really bad as if she was making stuff up and looking for a clout because technically Megan said that Tyler had no part in the record at all. Now she didn't know any better but she did say that because Juicy J did not inform her that anybody else took part on the track. 
So that was the first time that I and probably many other people had even heard of Wolf Tyler. And unfortunately, this was her first impression on a lot of people because this was in 2019 when Megan was fresh off Big Old Freak and Hot Girl Summer was just getting started. Megan had become a big deal, which means that majority of people took Megan's side regardless. And when Tyler tried to explain herself, people weren't trying to hear it. I remember seeing a comment saying something like, oh, she knew what she was doing. Why didn't she just say she only wrote the hook? She wanted to make it seem like she wrote the, the whole song for clout. So that's why I'm making this video today because Wolf Tyler did an interview with No Jumper and she got to thoroughly explain her side and it made a lot of sense. So go ahead and check this clip out. That situation was really unfortunate. You know, I kind of just came into there really excited about like the first placement and everything. Me and Megan were never in the same studio. Okay. We were, I've never met her in person before, nothing like that. I was in a studio session and I was playing my music and Juicy's manager came in, went in there, they played me a bunch of beats. I picked out the beats that I loved. I did some writing on it, melodies on it, and then boom. And, that, and in a situation like that, are you getting paid X amount per hour to be in that situation? Or are you getting paid like you'll have a writing credit or a, you'll no, make a percentage? Honestly, like I was just going in there just really humble. So um, I wasn't mad that any of that stuff happened. I just hate that how it was portrayed on social media because mm. it just made me look like she's a liar you know so uh, how did you find out that that song was gonna have meg on it it just came out and you were just like holy I shit a text message from juicy's manager saying let me get your bmi information uh -huh. we want to make sure you're good on that record but when i got that text message when i went to socials the track list was already out a week before so the writers that were on that record have already put it out on their socials. She put it out on her social. Juicy put it on her social. So I was the last one to find out. So the other writers had already said stuff publicly about the fact Correct. that they were involved. See, that's the interesting Correct. thing. Is Post still up. And as for why she didn't specify what she did and didn't write when it comes to Simon Says, this is what she had to say. It was just like, oh, shoot. Like, you know, I was a part of that record, too. So everybody else posted about it. Let right. me, like, post about it, too. But honestly, like, when I wrote my caption... I really was just taking half of it as a template from the other songwriters that say something like grateful to be a part. I've never really seen a post on a songwriter's page that says grateful to be a part of a record. I wrote the verse mm. and I wrote this down the third. Like sometimes they never really specify it. So. So that just goes to show just how much these fan bases can turn nothing into something. I remember when all this happened, I felt like maybe Megan could have told her fans to back off Tyler or try to figure out what was really going on. But then again, she did say that she asked Juicy J and he didn't mention Wolf Tyler's name. And being that Juicy and Megan are cool and he is someone she looks up to, I see why she just took his word. Also, you got to think at the time, Megan was very new. She had just lost her mom and her grandmother and people discredit female rappers all the time. Some of Nicki Minaj's people who knew her when she was just coming into the rap game are still to this day in 2020 having to take up for Nicki's writing capabilities. And then one place we went to Warner Brothers, Kevin Lyles. Mm -hmm. I, went, we, Kevin I, went, I went with Nicki and Kevin says, I love the group, but it's that girl, it's that girl. Right. But the thing about it is that they wanted to have a ghostwriter for Nicki. Gene Nelson like, said that. Right, Gene Nelson so, at the no, time wanted Jules Santana to write for her and she refused right. but yeah, before yeah, I didn't yeah. and Nikki didn't want to because Nikki always had a thing about right now, writing her own that yeah. was impressive to me with Nikki because let me tell you at that time yo was hungry mm -hmm. right. real hungry and even with that and she had a little crush on Jules right even with that Nikki was like I don't care B I don't care I write my own rhyme damn mm -hmm. that right and she oh, she's serious about that because yeah. she broke she's serious and hungry about that. right from jump mm -hmm. from the jump that's oh, why you, you got, get so uh, mad she would be so mad for people to say she don't write her own rhyme yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and sure Tyler could have said that she only wrote the hook but it makes sense as to why she didn't because she's new to all this as well and she just did what she saw all the other writers do which is just say they're grateful and lastly while these two women are on the front line having to defend them themselves where the hell was juicy j at and why he didn't just tell megan that tyler was on the song and i'm still trying to understand if tyler got paid or not because even though she said the manager asked for her licensing she skipped all around that question talking about being humble 
But the good thing about this is that both Tyla and Megan seem to be sensible women. Tyla doesn't seem to hold any hate towards Megan or the situation and we have seen that Megan isn't really for putting women against each other anyways or for all that drama. And that's really important because if you want to be all the way real, the last biggest female artist beef was carried by two parties and that wasn't Nicki and Cardi. It was the fans and the people behind the scenes. Make sure y'all check out Tyler's full interview on No Jumper. It was very interesting. And make sure you drop down in the comments to let me know what you think about this whole situation. Like the video because it's good for your edges. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a video. And that's it for today. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.